Now in physics, we use letters to represent different quantities. For example, a letter F, if it's a capital F, represents force, whereas if it's a lowercase, it represents frequency. And so there's one limitation is that we've only got 26 letters in the alphabet. So that means there's only really 52 different quantities we can represent like this. So what we've done instead is we've added some other letters from the Greek alphabet. Now, um, some of these are going to be quite new to you. Some of them you might have used before. But let's start with alpha and beta, both types of ionizing radiation. And indeed, from alpha beta, we get alphabet. So alpha uh, is drawn a bit like this. And this is a kind of ionizing radiation, which is uh, a bit like a helium nucleus or two protons and two neutrons. And that's emitted from the nucleus of an unstable atom. We've then got beta radiation, which is actually a high speed electron emitted from the nucleus. And then our third type of ionizing radiation is gamma. Other things that we might use, uh, we use things like theta. Now, often in mathematics, we use theta to represent an unknown angle. But in physics, we can also use theta to represent temperature. We then have uh, things like delta. So delta is just this kind of triangle. And the delta symbol means change in. So it might be the change in velocity, or it might be change in time or change in temperature. We then got rho. This is a bit like a kind of more curvy kind of p, lowercase p. And we often use rho for things like density, you know, which is the amount of mass per unit volume. We then got uh, another quantity here, uh, which is lambda. This one is like an upside down capital Y, and this represents wavelength when it comes to looking at waves. And I suppose the final Greek letter that we use is omega. And omega represents ohms, which is a unit for measuring resistance. So really, there's these symbols here that you need to be familiar with from the Greek alphabet. You need to know how you know what they're called and also how to write them. So it might just be worth having a look at this. And then when you come to see these as, as you see them in equations, it's nothing to worry about. It's not super complicated. It's just we've run out of normal letters in the normal alphabet.